Hey guys, Mamie here with OneJoyaSkip.com. Thanks for stopping by today. We are going to be having a lot of fun today, and I am going to be using all kinds of different techniques to create this super fun card. And we are starting out with the Mama Elephant Carried Away stamp set, and I am also cutting out some circles to create this stencil to make some balloons. And the Mama Elephant stamp set does come with one balloon, but I wanted a bunch of different sizes, and so that's what I'm creating here. And so I'm just trying to put some in front and some behind just to give a very organic look to the balloons, even though they are perfect circles. <laughs> and then also I'm taking um, the little girl from the stamp set because this is going to be a girl birthday card. And I am putting her down below the balloons and I'm going to be creating some little strings that go down into her hands. And I'm using my Copic multi-liner and it's in a 0.5 because most most of the stamps that I come across lately are in a line that is about 0.5. And so I usually come to this uh, multi-liner in order to add my own elements on the card. And so, like I said, we're going to be doing a bunch of different fun techniques. And uh, this card took me psh, like two hours to make because I was just uh, making sure I did everything right because I didn't want to have to redo it because it was such a long card. And so I also took the Booyah stamp set here from Lawn Fawn and has a bunch of cute little elements in there. And so I'm just going to use those to decorate the balloons. And so I just put the stencils back over the balloons so that I could place the little images organically across the balloon just to make it look like, you know, it is a real balloon. And so that's a good way to make your image, as you can see, um, appear rounded and appear like a real balloon. And so I do that with all the balloons with a bunch of the different little elements that come in that little stamp set. And you can use any small stamp set that you have. I mean, any stamp set that you have that has small elements included. I also use a little puppy paw print from the, um, from the Paper Smooches stamp set that I have too. I think it's called Chubby Chums. I'm not sure, but I'm going to put a, a link to all the stamp sets below in case you're interested in using any of those. And so I am just going to stamp across all the different balloons before I get started on the coloring and the shading and the inking. Just so many different fun things we're going to be doing. So I hope you'll stick around till the end. I did have to speed up this video quite a bit because it was about a two hour video. So it is sped up. Um, I, I know some people are okay with that. I tried not to speed it up so much that you would get lost in, in what I was trying to uh, do in the video. So you guys just let me know because I like to please you guys um, in making my videos because I'm not sure what everybody likes, obviously. And so now I also created masks out of some Inka Dinka Doo masking paper. And I just used those same dies that I used to um, make that stencil to cut out the um, masking. And I put those all over the balloons because, of course, I'm going to do some ink blending on my background, which is super fun. And I'm creating a little land area down at the bottom as well. And once I have everything masked off, I'm going to use a technique that is quite common, um, but a girlfriend of mine uh, used this technique in our Valentine's Day hop, and I thought, hey, I'll use the same one, but I'll use my ink blending tool. And her uh, YouTube is The Papery Makery, and her name's Stephanie, and she's an awesome card maker, so you guys can go check her out to see how she did the same um, background. So I took one of my dies um, from MFT that creates kind of like a, a speech bubble, but I used it as a cloud die, and so, I mean a cloud uh, stencil, and so that's what I used here. I'm using the tumbled glass, one of my favorite distress inks. It's a very light blue, and it's perfect for the sky background. And all I'm doing is ink blending up across the um, little uh, the little cloud. And so I'm starting on the paper and then I'm moving my way up. And so that way you won't get any streaking. But honestly, this um, is really, really foolproof because um, you just blend a little bit and then move your little sponge up and you really can't mess anything up here and it comes out beautiful. 
And so as you can see, I'm not having to work at it very hard at all and it's very quick. And I definitely wanted to use this technique for this background because it is so easy, number one. And number two, because it creates a lot of dimension and I had to cover a full length of a card here with basically clouds. So this is a standard top folding A2 size card and uh, there's I'm not going to have time to put anything on the outside of it but um, I, I am going to show you guys all the stuff I do on the inside and I'll create the outside later on. So um, this will be the inside of the card. And so also I cut out these buildings that I have and if you have like houses or buildings or whatever it is that you might have as a, a metal die you can just cut out parts of that in some paper here and that creates this stencil of buildings and so I uh, am using just the black soot because I don't have a gray so I'm making sure that I really stamp off that black and I'm just going to ink blend right here on top of the buildings and you're gonna see how wonderful this whole landscape turns out just by doing these simple simple things that anybody can do and even if you don't have a mask, you can create your own buildings by just, you know, cutting up and to the left, up and to the left, you know, and just cut some little rectangles out. And those can be your buildings. It'll come out just the same. And so I'm very lightly ink blending. You don't really have to, and I'm doing it right on top of the blue sky because obviously the dark soot is darker than the blue. So you don't really have to worry about um, uh, having colors blending together and not looking right. This will cover up that blue perfectly. And so as you can see, I have this awesome landscape now and I'm going to um, remove all the masking so we can see all the goodiness below. I don't know what I was thinking about right there. <laughs> oh, I think I was looking for um, the other side of my mask so that I could create the grass at the bottom. I couldn't find it so I just ended up using my marker for that. So, but that's fine because this thing is this video is full of so many techniques. It's 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 going to be totally fine in the end. And so, um now I'm using my Copic markers and I'm showing you guys how to add dimension to your balloons. Go ahead and ignore the ones that I did in pink because my marker was completely dry, so I'm going to have to start on from scratch on those two pink balloons. And so just pay attention to what I'm doing here with the shading to create uh roundedness to the balloons. And I'm putting like a dark line on the left side that creates the roundedness to the balloon. And then on the right side, I'm leaving uh, a highlight, leaving it much lighter because I always usually have my um, light, lighting coming from the top right. And so make sure that anywhere that's... Okay, so here's... The, you have the sun coming from the top right. So anything to the left of an element is going to have a bit of a shadow. Because it's going to be darker, obviously. The item, the eye, or the image on top or beside is going to leave a uh, shadow on the left and the bottom left also. And so that's what I'm doing there. If you can see me adding uh, the shadows, and so here I'm going over this orange balloon, and this gives you a good idea of exactly how to do all the balloons. Because I'm obviously not going to have time to show all of them to you. So I'm taking my light orange. I'm going over the entire balloon get it nice and wet because these balloons are so big that your ink will dry way too fast and it'll be harder to blend. And now I'm taking my darker orange and I'm only using two markers. I'm not trying to make this super difficult. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it really simple. And so I, as you saw there, I used my dark orange and I just created a line, a, a rounded line on the left side of the balloon. And that will give it a bit of roundedness look. And so I'm going back over that with my lighter orange and then I am fading that orange over to the top right, just barely sweeping over in the top right so that I can leave it nice and light over there. And you can darken up that left side as much as you want to create contrast. And so that's what I did. I did a few layers of the dark orange so that I could create a little bit of more of a contrast there. And also this is the Nina Solar White um, cardstock, 80 pound cardstock. And this thing will allow you to add a lot of layers. Um, it does soak up a lot of my ink from my markers, which I wish I really would have thought about beforehand. But at the same time, it does add allow you to add layers with the same marker. And you don't even have to use a darker marker to get that blending because every time you go over it, it will darken up that color. 
And so here on the yellow, the same thing. And the yellow blended for me nicely, so that wasn't a whole lot of problem whatsoever. And so now I'm filling in all of the little elements here. I'm trying to use just the same colors throughout the whole card that I already have out. Like I said, I want to keep the coloring super simple because there are so many different things going on in this card here. And I'm just giving it a thumbs up because it actually turned out pretty decent. And so now I'm going to color the little girl's outfit here. And I'm doing very basic blending. Um, nothing special, but I did want to leave it in because I just can't stand to cut out anything that I feel like somebody might get something out of. And so I'm just using two colors for this as well. Two colors in each color family. And I'm just adding the light marker all over first, and then I'm coming back in with the dark mar marker to add the shading. And I'm just taking the dark marker to do her little boots so that we can have them nice and bright. And I'm just coloring her hair in with just one color and then her skin with two colors. And that's looking pretty good. I'll add a little bit of a pink cheek here. And now we're moving on to another um, technique, and that is to add highlights with a white pigment pen. And um, I really love this technique, especially for balloons, because balloons are quite shiny and they are the best element to add the white pigment pen to. And so I'm just doing a curved line, pardon my head, I'm doing a curved line around the right side because remember that's where our highlight is. And so the sun and the light is kind of reflecting off the balloon and that's what these little lines do. And as you can see here, I'm just drawing a quick little line. I do go back and thicken those lines up a little bit, um, but I just wanted you guys to see how to do that. You can want to stay close to the edge, but not right at the edge to create that highlight. Now I'm taking my um, N2 marker and creating shadow. And the shadow is just another step to really help your balloons or whatever it is that you add them to pop and kind of come off the page and come to life and give it a lot of dimension. And so as you can see here, um, I'm only adding the shadow to the left side and the bottom side or parts that are hiding behind an, eye, uh, an image. And so just pay close attention to um, where you're adding that shadow. You can't add it all the way around, but I wanted to leave it a little bit more realistic. And so I'm just putting the shadows to the left of the image. And it seems like something small, but if you see some of like the really good artists that are on YouTube, they this is what takes their card their cards, their art to the next level as far as doing these images and things like that. So don't skip doing the shadows because I think that you will really appreciate how it looks after you're done. And so here I am, like I said, um, I'm adding that white line a little bit darker. I'm using some tear tape to put down the card. And I'm just going to lay it right across the top. And this is gonna be the inside of the card. I'm just going to fold it over and um, use my bone folder there to create the crease. Press nice and hard. And so here is our card all prettied up. And I'm going to add the sentiment here from the same Mama Elephant Carried Away stamp set. And it says, um, go get carried away on your birthday. And I think it goes great with this um, card that we made here. I'm using my VersaFine Onyx Black ink to stamp that. And that's pretty much the full card. Thank you guys so much for stopping by, and I will see you in the next video.